Hey, hello, here we are today looking at automated dermal needling using the Derma FNS, which stands for Fractional Needling System. Now, the client has had anaesthetic cream on for the last 40 minutes. We have today have used Emla. Client is quite numb, and we've exposed the areas we're going to treat, and we're going to do it in sections. Now, this is a preparatory wipe we use with the Enapil. It's antibacterial, but it also helps to remove any of the emla that's left on the skin. As we've already gone over it once with some damp cotton pads. The aim is that we do not want any residue of the emla left on the skin so that the needle heads can glide smoothly over the skin. We're going to use a post laser or post care cream gel which is a glide medium. And this is a, a new test for this. We also use Sensicure cream gel, but this is a new Tebby skin version. I'm just making sure we've got it all off. As I say, this also will kill 99% of the bugs on the surface of the skin. So that's a good thing to do before you start putting needles in. And we just feel there's any stickiness anywhere. Did you go, did, you, did we put it on the top lift? No. Okay, we'll just show the techniques here today. Okay. Now, just so you can see, here is the FNS. Now, the FNS, you can see that it has a gauge there and then it has the needle heights, which is a continuous dial. And you can turn it from zero anywhere to up to two. If you take it all the way back, that goes to 2.5, but we've only graduated these to two. Now, that's the gauge. These are the needles which come sterilized you take the needle insert it into the end of the pen screw it in tightly remove the cap now these needles should always finish and always be in the down position and i'll turn this to below zero and you see the on off switch and if you just hold it there a second i'm just going to pick the leader so you should put the needles in with the power in because you might actually turn it on you can see you get three little flashing lights and you have three speeds. Tapping it once turns it on. Tapping it again speeds it up. Tapping it again speeds it up. To turn it off, you hold the button in. If you start it up again by tapping it, you can see the same process. Now you can change the needle heights during the procedure. You don't have to. Now I'm just going to set this at 0.5 and make sure that everything is as I want. I'm going to use it on speed three. Um, but before I do, I'm just going to take some of this post care cream, the Tebby skin cream, and, and uh, just spread this over the area that I'm going to treat at a time. So I'm using it as a glide medium, but also to suppress surface erythema. If we're trying to stimulate dermal remodeling and we're doing a direct dermal stimulation with multiple needles going into the skin, then we don't actually need surface erythema. So our endpoints are not necessarily um, erythema and pinpoint bleeding. Now I'm going to start it at 0.5. But one of the problems with rollers is if you've got a 1.5 mil roller, that's the depth you're going to do. But what we're going to do is start at 0.5 and see how the client responds. So firstly, I'm just going to check with the client how this feels. That's fine. Okay, so just a dabbing sensation. Then I'm going to start by just holding the skin tight and then working my way in slow circular motion across the skin. And I'm looking to see what sort of response I'm getting from the skin. Ideally, I'm going to get some small level of pinpoint bleeding. Now, these needles are 33 gauge needles. They're much thinner than with rollers and some of the other pens. And henceforth, the bleeding when it starts comes up later. I think for this first pass, I'm just going to stay at this height, and then when I do the second pass, I'm going to increase it slightly. You still alright, Sarah? Yeah. Now you can go in straight lines if you wish, but we find the small circular gives a better distribution of holes. I'm just going to turn this up now to 0.7, and now I've gone in a vertical way, I'm now going to go sideways across the same area. Now I'm engaging with the skin, I'm not hovering above it, I'm actually engaging with it. You can see the first signs of pinpoint bleeding. That pretty much tells me I've got the depth at the right level now. 
Again, small circles, always keep the needle head flat to the skin. So you've got to keep your wrist and your elbow and your shoulder loose. And then I'm going to do a third one and I'm going to go on a diagonal. We call this the Union Jack pattern because if you think about it across the face, it's like a Union Jack pattern. A little bit of blood, that's what we'd expect. Is it all right, Sarah? Yeah. Now I see other operators, this is the way we train people, and I see other operators who will go backwards and forwards many, many times, quite quickly, and go over it and over it and over it until they're happy. Now even though we show, this is this three different vectors, three different directions in small circular motions, we know gives the right number of holes per square centimetre to get a maximum response. Again, we're getting some pinpoint bleeding. Now I'm going to do the horizontal way, which relates to the cross of St. George. You can see there's no sticking, there's no catching. These pens are moving at over a hundred times a second, the needles are. Now the Derma FNS is not completely unique, but I, I've not found one yet. So we don't use it, we push the spring, the needles in using the motor but we also use the motor to pull the springs out. So whereas the others, they rely on a spring for the needles to recoil. With an FNS, when you turn it on, there's a little rubber collar inside the pen that grabs hold of the bottom end of the needle. And that actually helps push it in and pull it out. We do have a spring, but that actually is helping, but it's more about cushioning the blow. Now that's a typical finish that I would expect. So I'm just going to put this to turn this off and put it to one side for a second. Let me stay in place. And what I'm going to do is use some of this cream, because these holes are there, and I'm just going to rub that into the area. And then I'm going to let that settle. You can see the lack of erythema, but we're actually reducing erythema. Now, if you wanted to put other things in the skin at this point, it's a good thing to do. We personally don't recommend the use of things like hyaluronic acid during the um, session because we find that there is potentially legal issues of what is a topical being, it, it, being introduced to the systemic circulation. But that's a discussion we're happy to have with you at a later date. So now I'm going to apply some cream to the side. Just turn the client's head that way a bit, okay? Now I use 0.7 in the area above. Here I'm going to increase in the fleshier areas around the cheek etc I'm probably going to go anywhere from 1 to 1 1.5 and then across the chin and up around the orbital area maybe at 1 or even less and I'm also going to show although I know the cream wasn't put there I'm going to demonstrate how you go close to the eye we can get within a millimeter of the eye are you all right Sarah yeah so again start up the pen I've got it adjusted here now to one, and I'm just going to work my way down here. So you can, some people will draw lines and distinguish the area where they've been. So I'm just going outwards away from the center, but in a straight line. And if you just pull the skin tight as you do it. You all right? Yeah. I'm going to do the area around the eye at one, just around the orbital area. And then I'm going to increase the depth. You can go slowly, but always keep moving. Don't stop with this. I'm just going to turn it up a bit to 1.3. And go over that area again. See how does that feel okay? Uh, yeah. Now, sometimes we get asked the client to just blow your cheek out a bit. It helps with it. Some people make them hold water in the mouth or even push cotton wool in the mouth. You can do a stamping technique. With a stamping technique, you will get a bigger reaction. You can see that I'm getting some pinpoint bleeding just there. So that shows I'm at the right height. Are you okay? I'm not throttling you or anything. No. Come higher if you wish. 
And I've gone up to 1.5 now. And I think that's about right for Sarah's skin. Okay? Yep. Again, look at the three vectors. I know I'm going a bit off piste, but that's what happens. If I was treating any particular scarred areas, I'd probably go up to two and I would stamp it. I'm just going to pause that there. And now I'm going to take it down to zero. And the reason is because I'm actually going to look around the eye area. The eye area we normally do at 0.2 to 0.5. But if you start at zero, so you see the client just flinches the first time. Now you probably can't feel anything because it's actually at zero. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And then once they're used to it, I turn it up to 0.2. We'll see whether that's okay. Feel that? You feel that? Yeah, a little bit. Now you can get within a millimetre of the eye. If you do it at 0.5, you'll probably have some puffiness the next day. 0.2 tends to be okay. Now I say we haven't got any emla in this area, so I'm just being a bit cautious. But you can see again the pinpoint bleeding here. And I'm just going to turn it up to around point N. I'm just going to do the chin area while I'm here. Okay? Mm-hmm. Now some people will set these pens at 1.5 and do the whole face. And with skill, you can sort of vary your pressure to push harder where you want it deeper and not so hard where you don't. But I think it sort of defeats the object that if you've got a pen that can adjust the needle height, then you should use it. Okay? Mm -hmm. Again, with these fine needles, the blood comes up. You see the blood coming up now, just now. So it doesn't come up as quickly as with rollers because rollers make a V-shaped hole and the hole is actually, the diameter is wider. Now, if you're going across the top lip, you'd ask the client to pull the lip down. We're not going to do that. We can just demonstrate it. I'm going to turn it back to zero because you haven't got any emla on there. And literally, you can do it backwards and forwards or on a dabbing sensation. But that's just to demonstrate. So now I'm just going to turn this off and rest it back in its cradle. And I'm just going to get some of the post-care cream again. I'm just going to rub this around. You okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going. Put some more on the area. So again, these holes will close up over the next 10 or 15 minutes. So if you wanted to introduce anything into the holes, great. We are aiming that the clients are not going to be red the next day or even later that day. So we believe with causing the dermal injury, we would have prepped the clients with things like epidermal growth factors and the hyaluronic acid stimulators, which actually cause more fibroblasts to move into the area. So using growth factors and things like that during the procedure is not as important and maybe controlling the erythema. So we're going to move to this side now. So thank you. It's like at the hairdressers, then you move your head automatically. Well, I don't know what they do in ladies' hairdressers, but... Uh, So again, just going to put some of this, it's hydrating, it's anti-reddening, it's got three different anti-reddening, and you can see how it's quite easily to glide across the cream screen, uh, across the skin. It's what they call a creme gel. I put some on the nose, because you did put some on your nose before, didn't you? Mm -hmm. So we'll do the nose as part of this bit as well. So again, I'm just going back to one. Now, if, you, if you're setting this, somebody's setting it for you, it's your responsibility to check that needle height before you use it. So that's at one. And going back to speed three, again, just holding the skin and working my way down from where we started before. Okay, Sarah? Yeah. That's around the orbital area again. At one, I'm getting the odd little blood spots. I know I'm about right. And then I'm going to lift it up as we did before. It's 1.5. Again, if you can blow the cheek for me. Ideally, you go from the 
centre of the face to the outside. Try and go in multiple directions. See, we are getting the odd spin pin spot. If you get clicking and catching, it usually means you haven't removed all the anaesthetic cream. But as you can see here, we're fine. See, we're getting the pins pinpoint bleeding. I'll try and say it right once during this session. Now, if there are any active acne lesions or spots, you would avoid them because the idea is not to spread the acne anywhere across or spread the bacteria. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Again, nice little bit of erythema, some pinpoint bleeding, not excessive. I missed this bit here last time, so I'll just get that now. Now, if Sarah had any particularly lines like nasal labials, you could sort of do that with a deeper thing, with sort of a, a targeted ear. So you can target, and these are often used post fillers for that. You can see how I'm targeting that area. Sarah doesn't actually have nasal labial lines, but I'm just demonstrating. And again, while I'm here, I'm just gonna do the eye bit again. Now, whether you go down to zero again, you can, but just get them used to it. Try and move, if you really want to do it, you should go almost from the outside in. So you can actually try and massage any lymph towards the lymph drainage. I put it to point two, and just with a stamping motion, okay? Mm -hmm. Some people go on, off, on, off, but you feel that a bit more, I guess. Yeah. I can tell from your wincing. <laughs> okay. And I say the top lips we're not doing today, but we've demonstrated that. The neck, you tend to come up the way, come up the way, come up the way. You can go down, but again, it tends to be in lines, in little round circles. But I don't think you have any emler on there, so we're not going to do that. But that's a good finish. There's a nice pink glow. The bleeding's very minor. Just put that to one side. I'll show you how to clean the pen in a minute. Just get some more of the cream. Again, just rub this in. Now, one of the things we find very good now, and I've seen it work really good, is to get a nice big lump and just sort of massage it into the skin for a good two or three minutes, and you find that it you get a uniform pinkness, and also the client feels a lot more comfortable. I obviously don't have the technique of a good practitioner. I'm a scientist more than a practitioner. I am qualified to do these because part of my qualifications is in human physiology and anatomy. And I have very good insurance cover, which I'm sure Sarah is very happy with. <laughs> oh, well, I'll tell you what I didn't do, and I must just do, do the nose. I forgot to do the nose. Let me just do that bit now before I go any further. So the nose will be around 0.5. Often the top lip and the nose are two very sensitive areas. If you're doing the nose, you have to literally pull the nose to one side. And then... Okay? Yep. So basically holding the nose tight. You can go up and down the ridge of the nose, but it tends to be easy to stamp. You can get people sneezing when you do this. And again, I'm going to change hands. Just like Ronnie O'Sullivan, I can use both hands. If you don't follow snooker, that won't mean anything to you. That's fine. I'm gonna stop that there again, holding it in. I'm gonna take the power out, just so that's a safety issue. And then I'm gonna go back to just massaging this. Sarah has a uh, Beauty therapy qualifications. She probably thinks I'm making a pig's ear of this. <laughs> How are you feeling? Okay? Yeah, it's fine. Now, the effects of this was that the fibroblasts will be stimulated, but they there is an inflammatory phase to collagen development, and that lasts for the next five to seven days. So you wouldn't want to repeat needle because it's only about day five to seven when the fibroblasts actually activate and start to make more collagen. And you shouldn't really repeat this treatment for at least four to six weeks later. 
In between that, you can use things like growth factors, or depending on the client, you might be using lightning creams to prevent any inflammation. But you can see here the level of inflammation using this post laser, it's called a PLC post laser cream, but you can use it for all sorts, is that, you know, with the bleeding, etc., you'd expect a lot more redness than maybe you would see with particularly manual rollers. How do you feel? Fine. I've also seen people use cotton pads with warm water on if they want to remove the blood first, you know, but I find this waterless cleansing system better. Some people will actually put, um, as I'll demonstrate, the cream on the pads and actually massage that into the skin. But, you know, tactileness, it's probably better. I'm just now, the idea is they probably sit in your waiting room for five to 10 minutes after this, just making sure everything is as it should be. And we will put a UV, high factor UV on with an anti-reddening. Although that's not necessary always. See, there's still some of the blood coming away here. So sometimes this way, these cotton pads are quite useful. So we haven't thinned the skin. So the argument is, the main thing is you're using things to make sure the sun doesn't make the skin more red, as opposed to um, with a peel or a laser where you thin the skin and you, the melanocytes are more exposed to UV. So I'm happy with that as a guide. In other situations, when we've numbed the skin with Emla, we've applied, we've taken the Emla off using the pad, and then we've um, applied uh, mandelic acid for up to 10 minutes to exfoliate the skin. We're also putting the MSM that's in our Enapil mandelic into the skin, which also helps to suppress erythema. But with the mandelic acid, we're using that as an exfoliant to get a, um, uh, a more cosmetic finish at the end of it. Because as I said, the needling pens don't actually remove any of the surface dead skin. Just while you stay on the shot there, I'm just going to demonstrate with another prep wire how we remove the needle. Because this is quite key. As I say, these uh, pens, if you can just lift up to me now, but not to the pen. You can see I'm opening so and I'm actually going to cleanse this with the needle in. So I've taken the power off and I'm cleansing it all the way up the, the pen and then when I get to the top I start to unscrew the needle and you find that you unscrew it in this case it's come out but you can't really see but there is a little white collar down the middle of that pen that when you turn the motor on it grabs the end of that needle so the motor pushes the needles in it also helps pull it out and the spring assists so that pen, there's nothing in our needle heads, nothing can get from the needle head inside there. So it's protected. This is why we cleanse it with the needle still in. That needle goes in the sharp spin. And then this is just can go back in and cleanse that off and then it's ready for the next use. And there we have it, a Derma FNS system. If you're doing other areas of the body, it's very similar. You can just change the height and uh, we're always here to hold your hand and talk you through it. And uh, we do practical sessions all over the country. Thank you for your attention.